Have you ever talked about buying something, then Facebook starts showing you ads of what you just talked about? The truth is, Facebook tracks us in many ways most of us don't even realize, and it is so good at it. We think it's monitoring our conversations. They use sophisticated demographic and location data to serve up ads, raising huge privacy concerns. Web 3.0 is being viewed as the answer to many of these issues and will change the world. Keep watching to find out how 3.0 is going to give you complete freedom and control on the internet. Before we look at 3.0, let's see how it got here and how the internet was developed. Web 1.0 The first evolution of the internet was introduced to the world in 1989. The first evolution brought life to static personal web pages hosted on servers that were either ran by internet service providers or on free web hosting servers such as Tripod and GeoCities. Unlike current websites, which use relational database management systems to provide information to the user, Web 1.0 provided users with the data directly from the file systems of the server on which the site was hosted. Web pages in 1.0 were built using server slide includes or SSI or common gateway interface or CGI. Table and frame HTML elements were the main building blocks to develop static web pages. In the days of Web 1.0, communication between content creators and consumers, that is, commenting on the content, was not implemented. To fulfill the need of communication, there was a method to send forms via emails to each party. Aside from that, Web 1.0 was flooded with consumers, with only a handful of content creators to fill the internet until 2004. At the start of Web 1.0, users were charged per pages viewed, limiting the accessibility of the web to wealthy people in society, making it a luxury. At the core, there were only four main design essentials, static web pages, content delivery systems, pages built using server slide includes or common gateway interfaces, and lastly, frame and table HTML tags. Web 2.0 The introduction of Web 2.0 in 2004 marked the end of the first evolution of the internet. After the introduction of Web 2.0, due to the lack of user interaction on the web, the term, the read-write web, was coined. With the birth of the read-write web came concepts of blogging, social media, and video streaming. Web 2.0 mainly highlighted user-generated content, usability, information exchange among computers, and the use of the information gathered. Web 2.0 led to the near extinction of the bland, old, tasteless, static web pages of Web 1.0 with its modern, dynamic, and functional web pages within a very short time. Design principles and frameworks like Ajax and JavaScripts brought new features like podcasting, blogging, tagging, curating with RSS, social networking, social bookmarking, social media, and web content voting. The introduction of social media brought unknown internet users, once lost in a cold, dark, anonymous network, to a place where they can socialize with the whole world. With the introduction of mobile internet access and powerful mobile phones like iPhones, Web 2.0 grew at an exponential pace, pushing Web 2.0 centric companies to the top of the world. Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, together abbreviated as FANG, experienced exponential growth with Web 2.0, while others that were either slow or unable to adapt to Web 2.0 experienced major disruptions of their original systems. Over the years, with capabilities of Web 2.0, major social media companies started gathering users' personal data to give users a better experience than yesterday. This also led to targeted advertising while browsing their website. With these custom experiences came user addiction and increased advertisement revenue for companies. With the growth of the Web 2.0 came the beginning of cloud computing, reducing the production and maintenance cost of websites and web applications. This led to a rapid growth of web-based services. Cloud computing also presented the concept for software as a service, making several industries easier to handle and utilize. But Web 2.0 was not perfect. It had one major flaw, centralized databases and centralized manipulation. This flaw now fuels the development of the next era of the internet, Web 3.0. The term semantic web was initially coined by the original creator of the World Wide Web, Tim Berners-Lee, in a 2007 TED conference. The semantic web describes a web where its applications and websites are smart and capable of comprehending the actual meaning of the user's search terms and able to filter only relevant websites for users among billions of other websites on the internet. Looking at where present web technology is headed, Web 3.0 could be run completely on blockchains or peer-to-peer -peer nodes, just like how torrent networks operate in the present. Web 3.0 brings the semantic web. AI, connectivity, and universal presences as its main features, with qualities such as decentralization, trustlessness, and permissionless web, where users can interact with the web without a third party, 
which was once a major part of Web 2.0. The features of the semantic web demand the use of declarative and concept categorized languages like OWL. This is to produce the domain specific ontologies which help machines to reason about the information and form new conclusions rather than simply matching keywords. In addition, Web 3.0 brings with it social bookmarking search engines that can provide users with the most relevant answers and information for their searches. To back these results is the user voting framework, which made those results most relevant by previous searchers. The birth of Web 3.0 brings with it anonymity, where users' online identities are no longer needed to be tied with their real identities. This makes the user completely anonymous and allows them to have a completely different presence on the web. According to the Web 3.0 specialists, Web 3.0 is going to be run by a decentralized group known as DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization. However, with the upcoming metaverse technology, there is a strong possibility that Web 3.0 will be likely an omnipresence all around the globe, handling massive amounts of data and processes with uncontrollability. This omnipresence brings ubiquitous computing to Web 3.0. Ubiquitous computing means every device in the user's environment to intercommunicate with each other, connecting every everything to everyone. Above everything else, decentralization, trustlessness, permissionlessness, and AI will be defining factors of Web 3.0. The bottom line of Web 3.0 renders as a double-edged sword cutting both the good and the evil sides of society. To simplify Web 3.0's greater utility, this example will paint a vivid picture for you. Imagine a user making a plan for a vacation with a budget. As of now, the user has to spend hours looking for service and comparing prices on the internet to get the best service for the best price of their vacation. But with upcoming Web 3.0, intelligent search engines will be able to combine all the users inner data and generate tailored recommendations based on the user's profile and preferences, saving them hours of time. Alongside these possibilities, Web 3.0 also invites a lot of major pitfalls to society as well. Cyber crimes, hate speech, misinformation, and much more will become common due to the lack of centralized control over the web. With great power comes great possibilities, but the real question is, what will that great power become?